left remote Nine Mile Canyon in search of beauty and solitude, and we found it in the San Rafael Swell. Covering approximately 2,000 square miles between Castledale and Green River, the swell is bisected by Interstate 70. On the north side is the San Rafael Swell Recreation Area, managed by the Bureau of Land Management. On the south side is Goblin Valley and Capitol Reef. Geologically, the swell was originally a dome or anticline of layers of sandstone, limestone, and shale. Uplifted and eroded over millions of years, the resulting playground offers abundant recreation, including slot canyons, remote camping, off-roading, and isolation you will not find in the adjacent national parks. Oh my gosh, John's got this flossing disease. Oh my God. <laughs> what? Do it again. must see is the Wedge Overlook. Where in the Grand Canyon can you drive along its edge and see no other people? The holes in the chests of these figures were intentionally pecked. So what are you making, Deb? I'm trying another experiment in the Omnia oven. I'm going to make a, a fruit cobbler. I get this cobbler mix, but it's really too sweet when you use like those pie filling type fruit things. So I'm going to use fresh apples. I'm going to use two apples. Um, fresh fruit is better. And uh, I'm going to pre-cook the apples though, because otherwise I think they'd be too hard. I'm going to pre-soften those up a little bit and then and then I'll show you how I do the cobbler mix. And then I get to eat it when it's all done? And you have to share it though with our friends. Oh man. Now normally at home I'd melt the butter first in the microwave, but here I'm going to let the oven or the stovetop melt it. And once the butter is melted, then you mix together this package and two thirds cup of milk and then you just pour it over the butter. And then when your fruit is done, then you just pour the fruit over that and let it go. We'll see how long it takes. A little bit more. So we are staying at the San Rafael Bridge Campground, I think is what it's called. There's an old bridge here that built back in the 30s, but by uh, the CCC. 
And we're staying here. It's a couple miles away from this amazing panel that's called the Buckhorn Panel. And John says the Buckhorn Pictograph Panel. It's 150 feet long, and it's uh, pictographs m more than it is petroglyphs. And it's amazing that the paint is still there. So we're gonna. The best time to see it is first thing in the morning before the sun is on it. And then that's when you see the best color. So we're going to get up tomorrow morning and drive up and so we can get better pictures of it there. And then explore the rest of the canyon because we're going to be here for two nights. And this is an amazing place. $6 for camping, $3 if you're old geezers like we are. And it's gorgeous. It's a bit warm in the day. Right now it's probably 80, but it's not bad. And tonight it'll probably get down into the 40s. And will you sleep with the back doors open? We'll start sleeping with the back doors open and see how cold it gets. Then we can cuddle. <laughs> Pick that up. What was that you just put in there? Milk. Two thirds cup of milk. Or as our son used to say, cup of monk. <laughs> Melted. Ouch! I always do that. Don't put your hand over that hot. Now, I'm going to turn this off so I don't burn myself pouring it in. And then you just pour this in. Make sure I got all the dry stuff at the bottom. There we go. And pour it in. Pouring it in. Pouring it in. No idea if this is going to work. At home, I usually use a well, like a 9 by 6 or I don't know what it is. Then, I'm just put the fruit right on top. Start her up. Ouch, that's hot. Man, that's hot. Where's my lid? Here it is. Okay. Whoa, that's hot. Okay. Now, how much are you going to cook it for? How long? Well, in the oven at home, I do it for 40 minutes, but here it might take an hour. I'll just keep checking it. Thanks, Kit. Thanks. Okay. There you go. <laughs> you can stop filming. No, you, you got to taste it now. Oh, oh, you can still stop. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh. Whew. Yeah, this all started when Bruce, Bruce um, brought us over some, he would bring, he would go to Polly's Pies. And then bring us over some that because he didn't want to eat the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, so then I found this and I took this over to him. <laughs> <laughs> and so he ended up buying a case. And then, you know, I bought a case of it because I can't find a it. A case of what? Of the mix. Oh. And Because I, I can't find it in any of our stores. Mm. Okay, John. <laughs> oh, it's hot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. Mm. I actually like this mm. cooked better than the one at home. Until it's chewing the. Mm, You're gonna do the happy dance? <laughs> Did you put the apples <gasps> in there? Mm hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Oh, I will have to do the happy dance. <laughs> All right, just cut to a copy of me doing the happy dance. That's a good one. The swinging bridge doesn't swing. 1935 and 37 it was built by the CCC Our friends have gone off to uh, find more petroglyphs, but I have to edit video. And besides, John and I want to take a bike ride, check out some of these dirt roads up here. I got to take a break from the editing. So we're going to take the bikes and keep going down this road to see where it goes.
We decided that Thursday is the new Friday, at least out here, because people start going out on Thursdays to find a spot for the weekend. And this is a great spot because there's so many dispersed campgrounds. But you, you know, some vehicles you may not want to bring down some of these roads. They're pretty rocky, which makes me want to do a little disclosure here about some of the roads we've been on uh, on our bikes. They've been really rocky. This whole area, the San Rafael Swell, is very rocky. And so you get kind of beat up. If you don't like getting beat up, then don't do this. Uh, the other thing is if you're a lady, you're going to want to have some really good support. <laughs> so uh, that's uh, something to consider. And other than that, there's tons of dispersed places. We've just been taking all these little uh, side roads off of the Mexican Mountain Road. And uh, there are not many people. Yeah, there, you can see some people are starting to look for campgrounds, but there's still tons of spots. <laughs> Through the sand. Uh. To deflate the tires on the 20 miles we have to get back to highway 70 because it's uh connie says it's a bit a bit rough more rough than the one we came in on so what are these things here john this is the original that we bought and this removes the valve stem to do the tire deflation but then you have to push the, the valve stem back in check the pressure check the pressure so it's a back and forth basically process. what chris Schantz does on his, it's his a, videos it's a back and forth process. okay it's kind of painful this on the other hand is just a tire pressure register so when we get to a certain point it just tells you what the tire pressure is okay. on both of these you press the button returns it to zero and away it goes these are ston tire deflators and the ones that i marked in red are for the front tires so but, the, the he put a little bit of red something on there so that's for the front tires and that right. deflates it to 39 pounds 39 pounds and the automatically ones, automatically and the ones in back will take the 70 pounds down to 49 pounds automatically so automatically. you don't have to stand there okay and we'll show you how they work. Okay, let's do it. Pull off the cap. And replace it with the one in red. Turns off automatically. That's cool. And then you remove after deflation. I'm gonna check the pressure to see what if it worked as advertised. Yep. I like it. Got some dusty bikes. Okay, we finally made it back to the interstate. Very dusty when cars go by. Oh, it's awful. We're at exit 131 off of the Interstate 70. And if you want, the easier way to get in is from the Castledale side as opposed to the Green River side because the road is paved-ish. It's kind of like the chip seal up in Alaska and Canada, but there you won't be have all this dust this this pin fell out of the fire extinguisher on the drive. <laughs> Settling back here. <laughs> Key and ignition. Turn through the accessory mode. Turn on the air compressor. There's one in the front and one in the back. That's right.
So what's wrong with the air compressor that comes with the van? It doesn't have enough horsepower to pump up the tires quickly. It took me about 20 minutes to go up five pounds with that thing. That's just too long to air down four tires. What is it? It's 55, so I have to come down to 49. Wow, wow. So, so that's how fast it that's is. That's how fast it is, yeah. Let's see what we got. Reset it to zero. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at that dust. Oh. Oh. Tush.